Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And I'm Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry. And thank you for tuning in to another program of A Greater Understanding. Those of you that have subscribed, I want to thank you very much. Uh, our numbers are going up. We're still not at the numbers where we can go live on YouTube. So if you have it in your heart to care about people, as I do, love people, as I do, look to the world as your how would you say, place of missionary and the world, uh, then please subscribe. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is A Greater, G-R-E-A-T-E-R, Understanding, U-N-D-E-R-S-T-A-N-D-I-N-G, Genesee, G-E-N-E-S-E-E. -E -E. And subscribe, hit the subscribe button and share that with your family, your friends, and your enemies. And you say, Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, why your enemies do you want to share the truth with? Well, your enemies just might one day become your brother or sister in Christ. And I do know that there are many other faiths and beliefs that listen to our program. You're all welcome. Uh, the Muslims, the uh, Zoroastrians, the Buddhists, the Druze, which is my heritage on both my mother and father's side. And uh, they call them the Muhadin, as those of you that speak and understand Arabic, the believers in the one God. Um, today, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. Uh, the topic is, how does faith, faith and belief access the kingdom of God? Stay tuned and you'll find out. song uh, that was picked out special by um, <laughs> Steve <Hi>. Myers. <laughs> uh, and I want to thank uh, John Wilson and Steve Myers for allowing me, Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, to minister the gospel to the world. And today we're going to talk about um, how does faith and belief access the kingdom of God? Before we get started, uh, you know that a Greater Understanding is every Tuesday from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, and we do it live on Facebook. Um, and those of you that are listening to it after, uh, please adhere to the message because it's a message that is needed for not only you, but those that you speak with and those that cross your path. Um, so every Tuesday from 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, we have a greater understanding here at All Points TV or Omni Orbis Church. Thanks to John Wilson and Steve Myers. And um, on Tuesday night at the great city of Public Library of Flint, Michigan, where this is being sent to you from the great city of Flint, Michigan, which I believe uh, through revelation and through listening to other pastors and preachers and bishops and reverends and uh, all over, uh, not just Michigan, but all over the world, believe that Flint is the site of the largest end-time revival in the history of the world, or Great Awakening, as it is said. So, also on Tuesday night, I do a Bible study under the auspices of Mount Hermon Ministries, which is a ministry that I had founded many years ago. And if you'd like to attend, you can dial 701, and our country code is 1, for those of you outside the United States, 1-701-802-5180. That's 1-701-802-5180. And then when requested, you can put the access code, which is 6344132-POUND. That's 6344132 and the pound sign to access it. 
Today we're going to talk about a study uh, from Psalms 18, 1 through 50. It's a call for God's deliverance, a call for God's deliverance. And uh, after you study with us at the Bible study tonight between 5.30 and 7, uh, ask the question of yourself. So now after studying these, what is your decision on a call for God's deliverance? Also, every Saturday uh, from 12 to 12.15 on WSNL Christian Talk Radio, and you can go to your smartphone or Android if you have, and uh, access your favorite search engine. It could be DuckDuck, could be Google, uh, could you ask me Nassuri for WSNL Christian Talk Radio. And once you get that link, share that link with everyone that you know in your contact list. Uh, and we're going to talk about on Saturday, the 3rd of February, that's next month, <laughs> 3rd of February, a day after Groundhog's Day, uh, marriage, how to figure out why we fight in marriage, those of you that are married. And those of you that are not married, you fight because you're not doing it God's way. It says one man and one woman. And if that offends you, so be it. Because my Bible says one man and one woman. And it starts with the first marriage of Adam and woman. Um, almost 6,000 years ago, for those of you that don't believe in carbon dating. Today, I want you to take time to pray for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the National Day of Repentance. National Day of Repentance. It's going to be held in Washington, D.C. There's going to be many people there for their own interest and for God's interest. And repentance is what? Uh, repentance is turning 180 degrees in the other direction if and only if you are practicing the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. Or it's 180 degrees turning into the right direction, which is God's will. And to learn about God's will is in these 66 books called the Bible. And uh, from in Genesis, in the beginning to I come quickly in Revelation. And it has to be taken in context because a text without a context is a pretext. This is the one book um, that I call, now some call it basic instructions before leaving earth. I call it basic instructions while living in the earth. There's everything here in these 66 books. And to understand it is to study it. And then to look to who? To look to God through the Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit, our Lord and Savior's Holy Spirit, that he left with his disciples almost 2,000 years ago, not wanting to leave them orphans, not wanting to leave them orphans. And if you consider yourself as being one of his disciples, uh, you can call him Yeshua, you can call him Jesus, you can call him uh, the Messiah, uh, in all in all, he was God working in the flesh of Jesus Christ almost 2,000 years ago. And to be his disciple is what? It's right here in the book. It says, those of you that are my disciples will read my word and then do it. Huh? <laughs> read my word and then do it. If you go to Matthew 5, I just want to show you Matthew 5. Uh, you even have Mary, which was Jesus' mother, uh, talking. Uh, it's my, Matthew 5, and the scripture is uh, when she was asking, telling Jesus, well, they have no wine. It was the first wedding there in Canaan. And um, she told <laughs> everyone when Jesus, is he Matthew 5? Um, let's see, she was asking him, um, what, Jesus, we have no wine. And he told her, woman, my time has not arrived. But she told the servants, you servants, do what he says. Listen to what he says and do it. And that's very important, very important. Um, oh, we have a caller. Let's see. Good morning. You're on the air. This is a greater understanding. Who's calling? Uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Richard Ellinger. Oh, Dr. Ellinger. How have you been? Well, I was uh, trying to call you 
for the past couple of months and with your regular uh, phone number, 513-512-3200, that's on your business card, but they said uh, the phone had been disconnected. Did you get it connected again? No, it wasn't disconnected. It is actually, I had two phones, 513-616-6733, which I misplaced somewhere and I'm still paying for. Uh, but until I get another phone to replace it, the number is still active. And then I have 513-512-3200. That's 513-512-3200. But uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, I tried calling you a couple of times and kept getting voicemails. But uh, do you have a question? Today, Dr. Richard, we're talking about, and I know you're one of the most renowned church historians in the uh, 20 and 21st century. Um, and it's and we're talking about how does faith and belief access the kingdom of God? How, did who? how does faith and belief access the kingdom of God? Oh, how, how does belief access the kingdom of God? Faith and belief. Faith oh, and oh, belief. Oh, oh, well, see, you can't you can't access the kingdom of God without faith. Justification by faith alone. Uh, and Jesus Christ is everything. Yes, it is. That's that's the, that's the access to uh, all the blessings. But what about belief? How about what? Belief. What does belief have to do with accessing uh, the well, kingdom? Uh, uh, he wants us to believe God. Uh, Jesus wants us to believe the word of God. In Deuteronomy... Yes. Chapter uh, 8, verse 3, it says that uh, the, the scripture is the mouth of God. And Jesus said, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yes, that's when he was and being he, tempted he to Satan. To believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, Dr. Richard, you know what tomorrow is? Uh, no. Tomorrow is the National Day of Repentance. And uh, it's, it's being held in Washington, D.C., uh, specifically for our politicians, many of them, to repent, both on the Republican and Democratic and the, uh, also the other conservatives and uh, independents. Yeah. But National Day of Repentance. And you know, Dr. Richard, do you know why we need to repent? Uh, well, this is... Uh... When John the Baptist first introduced the Lamb of God, that's all he was preaching. Repentance. Was, uh, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Do you know without repentance, there's no salvation? Right, there it is. Yeah. You have to have repentance. And uh, without repentance, there's no salvation. Um, if you go to um, 1 Peter 1 9, I'm sure you un you've, you've read that millions of times. Um, first Peter, let's see here. First John one nine, first John one nine. Um, and repentance, it says, if we confess our sins, this is in first John one nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Do you know why repentance is important? Is because, you know, some people, they can't repent because they don't understand or believe that they are sinning. They don't believe they're right. sinning. So if you don't believe you're sinning, then you can't repent. How do you repent for sins that you don't even think you're doing? You can't yeah. do that. But but they need to repent. And that's going to be celebrated tomorrow on the 31st of January, the oh, National okay. Day of Repentance. Yes. Yeah, uh, you know, on, on believing uh, to uh, the Lord, you know, the Holy Bible is full of promises of the Father. Yes, and about 8,000 promises. Yeah, and he, he's given all of that to us, and all we have to do is believe. That's it? Yeah, belief is, is really important, too, along with repentance. Wow. Uh, you know, I tuned into your radio program Saturday. Yeah, how did you, you like talking, it? You were talking, I tuned into your radio program. Yeah. And you were talking about Brenda Lee Wallace, and I was wondering if uh, Brenda Lee Wallace 
is related to Martin Wallace. Might just very well be. She was my first bride, and uh, oh, she was oh, Italian. Is Brenda, is Brenda related to Martin? Uh, she might well be. I don't know. Oh, they both have the last name Wallace. Yeah. Oh, I guess all the Wallaces are related. Oh, okay. Probably all the Allengers are related, too. And all the Sifas are related to. <laughs> yeah, how is uh, your sister Michelle doing? Uh, she's doing quite well, but uh, she doesn't speak to me. You know, ever since oh, she got about that. Your brother? How about your brother? Well, let's talk about Michelle. Ever since Michelle uh, became uh, the personal representative of my mom's estate, she appointed herself. Uh, and um, she does not talk to anybody. Matter of fact, she's. She's not only brought the family together, but polarized them separately, <laughs> which, which wasn't the way we were raised. But we're praying for Michelle. We need to pray for Michelle. Mark, Mark, uh, which is the heart of our family, is doing quite well. He speaks to me. My brother, Terry, who actually lives here on the east side, uh, on Delaware, uh, I haven't spoke to him in quite a while. And other than uh, probably a few times at court and also at the uh, funeral or home going for my mom, Monet, who lives in Lawrenceville, Georgia, I believe, uh, with her husband, John, uh, which is a good family name, um, haven't spoke to her in about eight years. But um, who knows, God, if you keep praying, God will bring us together. And that's important. So yeah. your sister, Monet. Yes. And I was just told not to talk about my family business. But anyways, Dr. Richard, yeah. you have a question about um, how does faith and belief access the kingdom of God? Do you have any questions? Uh, well, uh, faith, faith without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes, that's true. That's, you got to have faith and you should always believe God no matter what. Because he's done so much for us, and well, uh, he has got a lot more in store for us. Well, Doctor Richard, what you have to do is have faith and believe. Yes, Doctor Richard. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, and that uh, we must what know who He is, and uh, when we diligently seek His face, it's important to know who He is, and uh, believe that He is God. You know, some people don't believe he's God. Some people are, are uh, they they are atheists and don't believe in God, and well, agnostic, don't like believe to, in anything. I like to tune into your program on the radio because you uh, always give people encouragement uh, to believe God. Yes, it is important. Uh, yeah. If if you don't believe in God, then you're kind of lost. Uh, you're stuck where you believe that you are the cause of everything that happens. And uh, I think sometimes if you think you're the cause and other people are the cause of things that happen, you get kind of depressed uh, with the way things are, thinking that you are the answer. But Dr. How Richard? Is, yeah, how is Wayne and Emily doing? Wayne and Emily are doing fine. They're doing fine. Good. Yes. Will you tell them I said hi? I will do that. And you have a blessed and safe day, Dr. Richard. Okay, tell Eddie Dabrowski I said hi, too. Okay. And uh, you take care of yourself. Yeah, call me. We'll go and break bread together. Okay, we'll see you later. Yeah, bye-bye. That was Dr. Richard Ellinger, uh, a church historian. Very, very uh, intelligent. Uh, matter of fact, to the point where uh, when he starts uh, giving you the knowledge that he's learned, uh, he doesn't end. And that's good. That's good. Um Let's look at the definitions of faith, okay? Number one, uh, faith, if you go to the Bible in, under Hebrews, and it is an epistle or a love letter that Paul sent to the Jews. Um, and if you look at Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, it says, now faith, not later, not after a while, not when the man from the station gets there, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance is something that, that has material uh, weight. The evidence of things not seen, okay, for by it the elders, not a bunch of old people, but <laughs> those that are mature in the word, obtain a good report. 
We all want to tape a good report, don't we? All of us. And it says, through faith, we understand that the world's, and no, it's not a mistake in my Bible. It doesn't say world. It says world's, more than one. We're framed by the word of God, and the word is Jesus. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear. Okay. Things that are seen were made of things that do not appear. So the spiritual goes into uh, the physical uh, world or carnal world, as it said. And that's how we receive things. Now, if we understand, let's look at James 2, 19. And there's going to be a lot of scripture in this this study about uh, how does faith and belief access the kingdom of God. If we go to James... Uh, James 2, 19. That's the second chapter of James uh, and the 19th scripture. And James in the Bible um, was Jesus' half-brother. Same mother, different fathers. And we go to 2, 19, and it says, and we're still looking at faith. It says that... Um, Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devil also believed and trembles. You see, I remember before I received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and went up uh, with an altar call at the First Baptist Church of Fenton, a community here uh, just outside of Flint in Genesee County, and uh, on Leroy Street. And there was Pastor David Brule. And my cousins, um, my aunt Sonia, uh, my my father's sister, uh, my cousins David Amin, and uh, also cousin Renee Amin Taylor. Um, she has a hyphen in her name Taylor because her father, uh, Uncle Bill Taylor, raised her. And uh, they told me they says, uh, cousin Lawrence, you need to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> and I says to, my, to them, I says, I know God. I don't need to go to church. I know God. And uh, after I started studying the word, I found out that the devil knows God also. <laughs> he doesn't have a relationship with him, but the devil knows God. And that's what, what's said right here in James 2.19. As it says, thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. You do well doing that. But the devils also believe and tremble. The devils also believe and tremble. Interesting thing about James, the half-brother of Jesus. He believed that his half-brother, Jesus, was the Son of God. But he didn't believe in the resurrection until after it had happened. Um, some did believe in the resurrection before it happened, but he did not believe in it until after it happened. And then he became the head of the church in Jerusalem. And he was martyred there uh, for the faith, though for the faith in the one God, uh, which was his half-brother. Isn't that interesting? So if we go to uh, faith, let's look at faith um, here. Um, faith, Belief and faith in modern usage differ chiefly in that belief is a rule. Belief is a rule suggests little more than intellectual assent. Faith implies, in addition, the element of trust or confidence, trust or confidence, in whom persuasion and belief had ripened into faith. Amazing. Um, the difference between faith and belief is faith involves reliance and trust. And it endures in the face of doubt. Imagine that. It, 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 let me read that again. Faith involves reliance and trust. And it endures in the face of doubt. Whereas belief is simply something we take to be true. Here's a statement. I can have faith in things or people without a corresponding belief. And I can believe in things that I don't have faith in. <laughs> Do you hear that? I can have faith in things or people 
without a corresponding belief. You can have faith in people without believing. And I can believe things that I don't have faith in. Uh, what does this Bible say about faith? Well, if you look at 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, for we live by faith and not by sight. Hmm. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith and not by sight. If you look at Hebrews 6, it says, and without faith, and Dr. Richard mentioned this earlier, without faith is impossible to please him because anyone who comes to him or God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those that earnestly seek him. Earnestly seek him. That's important. So in Christianity, what is Christianity? Faith and belief. Well, with Christianity, faith in one sense is often discussed in terms of believing God's promises. Dr. Richard mentioned that. There's about 8,000 promises in the Bible. And these promises are not all good. If you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. But it is a promise. It is a promise. And believing God's promises trusting in his faithfulness and relying on God's character and faithfulness to act, his character and faithfulness to act. Um, some denominations believe in the new covenant and in the doctrines of salvation by faith alone, by faith alone. Some don't. Some believe that, that you have to not only have faith in God and recite a sinner's prayer, uh, where you repent of your sins and then recite a sinner's prayer, calling Jesus to live inside you is enough. For some, it's not. For some, you need to be water baptized. And it mentions that in the 66 books of the Bible, that to be obedient to the gospel, you must be baptized in Christ. So what is the literal meaning of faith and belief? Literal meaning. Let's look at it. Belief, faith, credence, Credit means assent to the truth of something offered for acceptance. The truth of something offered for acceptance. Belief may or may not imply certitude in the believer, certifying the believer. My belief that I had caught all the errors, faith almost always implies certitude even when there is no evidence or proof. An unshakable faith in God. Yes. So what comes first, faith or belief? You want to know what comes first? Let's look at it. The Bible teaches that God intends our faith and our actions to go hand in hand. Faith and actions. Doesn't want one to be over first before the other. What God, what good is it, my brother? If man claims to have faith but has no deeds, huh, that must be James. Yeah, that's James. Faith without works is dead. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith deeds without deeds is dead. Interesting. So um, what we want to learn here about faith and belief is that you need faith and belief in order to access the kingdom. That's very important to have faith and belief. If you don't have faith and belief, then you can't access the kingdom of God. See, those of us that are his beloved, okay, not everyone is God's beloved, although he created all of us. His beloved is kind of like a, a close group of those that have received what Jesus Christ has done in the flesh. God in the flesh of Jesus Christ had done. So, it says, those of us that are his beloved teach others in the earth how to access the kingdom of God by the word, which is Jesus, by the word, which is Jesus Christ. So um, let's look at belief. If we go to Hebrews 11, 6, okay, Hebrews 11, 6, and it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What does it mean to diligently seek someone? That means in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, 
It's sort of like praying 24 seven and our prayers are access to the kingdom, but our faith is the currency of the kingdom. So God was working in the flesh through the flesh of Jesus Christ almost 2000 years ago. And to complete this. So if we look at Hebrew, James 1, 26, let's look at James 1, 26. And it says, 126, if any man among you seems to be religious, I don't, I'm not religious. I believe in relationship with God. Religion is, is a bondage and causing you to do certain things. But, and bridleth not his tongue, but delivereth his own heart. The man's religion is in vain. Let me read that again so we get that. If a man among you seems to be religious, okay, and bridleth not his tongue, doesn't hold his tongue. The tongue, uh, Paul says, is a small rudder that can cause a marvelous flame, things to be burned and destroyed. But deceive, de deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. You see, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. This is pure religion. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. What does it mean to keep yourself unspotted from the world? Well, if we go to Romans. Romans. 12, and here we have Paul or Saul. Saul was his Hebrew name and Paul was his Roman name because he was a Roman citizen, much like myself. I'm a citizen of the United States, but I'm also a child of the Most High God. And it says in 12, 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brother. He wants to convince you. Brethren, and that is brethren, the beloved of God, those that have received uh, uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, by the mercies of God, yes, and mercies is what? Unmerited favor, that ye present your bodies. We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice, okay? Living sacrifice, not dead sacrifice, not that I will die for you, Jesus, but I will live for you. What I do and walk will live for you. When I walk with you and talk with you and you tell me that you are my, I'm your own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That's a beautiful song. Holy, what does holy mean? Well, holy means sanctified, set apart, sealed, acceptable unto God, holy unto God. You see, God wants us to be holy. And you say, well, I'm not holy. and Not with the things I've done. No, it's not about what you've done or where you've been. It's where you're going. That's what's important. Where you're going, where you're moving. And what direction you're in. And going in the right direction. It says, um, which is your reasonable service. That's reasonable. To be a believer in Jesus Christ, a follower and to learn from him as you go each day is a reasonable service. And you teach others, not just with your words and give just word service, but with your walk and your actions in life. And then two, it says, and be not conformed. There we go to this world. Why don't we want to conform to this world? Well, look around you. Everyone's listening to this podcast all around the world, this globe called Earth. Uh, there's nothing good. And there's just one man that was without sin that walked on the earth almost 2,000 years ago. Yes. And he was good. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. That's what we want to transform. How? By the renewing of your mind. There you go. That's one part of your, your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. Renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the good, what is the acceptable, and perfect will of God. And how do you do that? By studying the word of God. That's how you do the perfect and will of God. So let's look at um, Matthew. See, we say here, it says, 
One, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And that's what faith is. Two, strong belief in God or in the doctrines of religion based on spiritual apprehensions rather than proof. Based on spiritual beliefs rather than proof. Now, if we go to Matthew 10, and Matthew, um, when he wrote the Gospel of Matthew, he was writing it as a Hebrew, as a Jew. Hebrew, not as a Jew, he had to be from Judea. But if you look at um, 10.34, Matthew 10, which is right after 9, Matthew 10.34, 1034, here we go. And this is the words of Jesus. Matthew 1034, and it says, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And the sword is the holy word of God. Um, he brought a sword with him, the word. And in James, let's see here, um, in... Uh, John 14, 6, John 14, 6, and John was one of the sons of Zebedee, not John the Baptist, but one of the sons of Zebedee, and his brother was James, and Jesus called him the sons of thunder when he was here on the earth. Now, 14, John 14, 6, 14, 6, and it says, and this was when he was talking to Thomas. Thomas saith unto Jesus, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus was telling them this earlier because he knew in 14.1 that he was going to go to the cross. His disciples are going to see their rabbi, which is teacher, their leader, their confidant, their friend, die on a cross is what they're going to see. Uh, in the carnal world. But if they understood the spiritual, they'll see something different. And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled in 14.1. You believe in God, believe also in me. Well, there's that belief again. You believe in God without proof. See, you believe in God, believe also in me. You see, many of the beliefs, matter of fact, all the beliefs on this planet believe in God some sort of God. Some of them believe them, their, their self is God. Believe in God. But Jesus was telling his disciples something different before he went to the cross. He wanted them to believe in him. Why is it important to believe in Jesus? Well, to believe that he's a son of God, then you believe there's a father. To believe that he's a son of God, you believe in also the Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. And there's many of you out there don't believe in the Trinity. Some of you believe that just the Father and, uh, and the Son, but not the Trinity. You see, if you believe, as he's talking about in him, you believe that he's the Son of God. And also, if he's the Son of God, then God the Father sent him. You see, he sent him. And many times in the scripture, he says, you'll believe that he sent me. It's important that you believe that he was sent. That's important. So he sent me. So having God send his son into the world as part of God, his son into the world as the word, have him walk on the earth in the flesh of men and women, and to live a life of almost 33 and a half years without sin. You see, when he when he went and he turned the, the money changers table uh, over with a cord that was wound three fold cord is unbroken, um, as it said, and he premeditated that he was going to use that cord to turn over the money changers tables. He was not doing it out of anger. It was a righteous anger. He was in right standing with God. And if you believe he's God, how could he do any different than being in right standing with God? So, and then he said, he told them after 
you believe in God, believe also in me. Then he said, and we're talking about belief. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And that would concern the disciples. Where are you going, Jesus? Well, he told them, the son of man is going to be um, abused and, and crushed and crucified and die and be buried and rise on the third day. And it says, I go to prepare a place for you. And, and if I go, see, he says if, because you see, um, there was his will and his will had to be in line with God's. And that was the will, the battle that was done in Gethsemane was for the whole world, all of the souls of the world, all of the people of the world, even the people that did not receive him and will never receive him. He died on a cross for all of you and myself. And he rose on the third day, as he said he would. After he preached captivity captive. What does that mean? He went into the bowels of hell and preached the gospel, the good news, to those that were waiting for him. And then he took captivity captive and took them all to heaven, where he presented his blood on the mercy seat. That's the seat where he's going to sit on when he judges the world on the mercy seat, unmerited favor, mercy seat. And he put, presented his blood on the mercy seat. And that blood, ladies and gentlemen, believers and non-believers, that blood is as fresh now as it was the day he presented it. And why would it still be fresh for almost 2,000 years? Because in heaven, there's no sin. You see, in the Bible, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life is in Christ through Christ Jesus. So he says, he told me going to go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you and you and you, all of you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, <laughs> that's God, I am. That's the same I am that, that he spoke through the burning bush to Moses on the mountaintop, Mount Sinai, in the middle of Saudi Arabia, uh, is the same thing that he called, what he called himself, I am that I am. When Moses said, you want me to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go, who shall I sell them, tell them that you are? And he says, I am that I am. And in the Bible, it says here, where I am, there you may also be. So you'll be with God. We'll all be with God those of her that are blessed enough to make it to heaven. And whether I go, and whether I go, ye knows, and the way you know. <laughs> this is when Thomas comes up with, uh, doubting Thomas, I can just see his wife say, Thadimus, you're giving the family a bad name <laughs> through doubting. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? You see, the Christians, before we were called Christians in Antioch, little Christ, it was actually a slang term, you know, <laughs> Christians. Um, we were called the way, the way. And what did he say? Jesus said unto him, Thomas, I am, that's God, the way that's what we were called. The truth, yes, he is the truth. And we're supposed to worship him now after he left and sitting at the right hand of the Father and ascended on high. We're supposed to worship Jesus, not in the flesh anymore, but in spirit and in truth. And the life, ah, the life, wow. Not just life, but eternal life. You see, those of you at the end of this program will have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And in life, there's many choices. You have many choices. You know, I want coffee with cream or sugar. Do I want tea? Do I want donuts? Do I want cake? Do I want steak? Do I want beef? Do I want lamb? Do I want pork? But in eternity, there's just two choices, ladies and gentlemen. 
heaven or hell. That's it. Two choices, heaven or hell. And you better make the choice right before you take your last breath. And it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. Not through him, but by him, by his ways, by believing in what Jesus Christ did almost 2,000 years ago, by the words of the scriptures that I study and you study daily. You're supposed to study daily. And, and it says that if ye had known me, okay, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him because they've seen the father. That's important. If you've seen the father, you've seen Jesus. That's what he was telling his disciples. So if you see Jesus in the word of God, you've seen the father, you've seen God. And then John 5, 23, let's look at John 5, 23, and we're still looking at belief, John 5, 23, and it says that all men should honor the Son, he's talking about the Son of God, even as they honor the Father, honor him like you honor the Father, he that Honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. So if you don't honor the Son, you don't honor the Father. In the Temple Mount, the Muslims have a temple there. And at the top, and it's written in Arabic from right to left. Now, Arabic and Hebrew is written from right to left. And it says, God forbid that he should have a son. Now, I'm going by what I've heard. I've not seen it but one day I will. God forbid that he should have a son. And it says here, what did it say? It says here in John 5, 23, that all men should honor the son, not some of you, not part of you, not just the Christians, not just the Jews, not just the Muslims, not just the Buddhists, not the Baha'i or the Druze, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son is not honoring the Father who has sent him almost 2,000 years ago. And he says here, verily, verily, that must have been really serious, because he said, truly, truly, I say unto you, and this is in 24, he that heareth my word, that's Jesus, and believeth on him, that's Jesus, that sent me, which is God, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Death unto eternal life. And then if we understand that, we'll understand what between faith and belief, how we access the kingdom. So, I pray that you have learned some things today and gleaned some knowledge about faith and belief and how to access the kingdom of God. Not when you get to heaven, what a glorious day that will be, but right now it can be glory, glorious and important and it's important to understand that so what you want to do is you have the opportunity to receive jesus christ your lord and savior so if you would wish to receive jesus christ your lord and savior and you have uh, in your heart that you want to do that then i suggest that you bow your head close your eyes some of you believe I should take my hat off. Okay, honoring God through prayer or in the sanctuary. Your life should be an honor to God. Every word you speak should be a prayer to God. Every word. So bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. And John, could you help me? Okay. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, thank I thank you for a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. 
and my Savior. I believe that you died. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And because I believe it, I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus, I receive you. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. And if you said that for the first time, you can get a hold of me, Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry at 1, which is our country code, 1-513-512-3200. And I will send you a Bible by giving me your name and address anywhere you are in the world, anywhere. Why do I do that? Is because that's what God put on my heart to do through the Holy Spirit. Because you need a Bible. Now, you can get a Bible on your smartphone, yes, or your Android uh, or, or Apple. But I like to have paper. In a paper Bible, you can write in it. You can work with it. You can study it. You can go back and forth. Um, I've worn out many Bibles. This particular Bible that I am studying from was given to me as a gift by Gary and Kim Allward. And they took over the ministry of Mount Hermon Ministries on November 30th, 2017. And it, I don't think you can see it, but it's signed by all of the members that were there that night at Sister Stephanie Razik and Larry Razik's home. And uh, it's, it's important to understand that things that we do and walk should be part of God. And it was given to Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa, Mount Hermon Ministries, November 30th, 2017. Pastor Gary had since went home to be with the Lord. Kim Elward, his wife, um, is still here going through some traumatic things. And please pray for her, her family. He has a son named Josh and Pastor Gary's family. What pray for them? Pray for them for, first of all, repentance. And second of all, pray for them that those of the family that have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior or at least have the opportunity to hear the gospel, are able to do that. And it's important. Well, um, thank you for attending another program of A Greater Understanding. Um, any of you that have questions, feel free to call me, Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry at 1-513-512-3200. That's 1-513-512-3200. And you can ask any question, even while we're going live, call me and ask any question. It doesn't have to be in line with what we talk about, but it has to be in line with what? With your heart and what you're questioning, what you need to know. You see, before we receive salvation, and some of you said that for the first time, that sinner's prayer. Before we receive salvation, actually God puts in our heart the message to look for him. He puts in our heart the thoughts to go and seek him. Because it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that amazing? While we were yet sinners, we were enemies of God, and he died for us. So um, we will do this again, Lord willing, and he is, on February the 6th. And that's next Tuesday, February the 6th. Um, you'll Thank you for tuning in to another program of A Greater Understanding. And you all be blessed and uh, pray for one another because the days are evil and he's on his way back. When? Son didn't even know when he was here but the father knew when he's going to send the son back to receive his bride. 
his bride. Thank you very much. See you on the 6th of February. You all be blessed.